opinions, positions, or strategies expressed on WLAF TV 12 do not necessarily reflect those of the staff, management, ownership, or advertisers of WLAF TV 12, 1450 WLAF Radio, FM 100.9, or 1450 WLAF.com. This is Mark with Insurance Consultants. You're used to seeing Blake McCoy sitting here, and uh, I'm up here cutting a new commercial for y'all to look at. Uh, I help people with have Medicare and TennCare, and if you've got any questions about what you're eligible for, whether you should be getting extra benefits, is your plan changing, or do you even need anything to go with your Medicare, those are the types of questions I can help you with. Please give me a call at 1-866-691-5571. I'll be glad to give you a call, and as always, we charge nothing for our services. If we can help you in any way, we'll be glad to do it. Y'all have a good day. Welcome to Ray's Axe. Ray's Axe has a friendly service with a family environment. With that country kick, it's a family owned with delicious food. Offering breakfast, lunch, supper all day long, and great steaks, wonderful salmon. Also for that sweet tooth, pies and much more. For the kids, games, daily specials, dine in or carry out. Call 423-569-3354. Call Ray's Axe today. Riggs Drugs has been a part of Campbell County for generation after generation, serving our friends and neighbors. And now we have redesigned our store to better serve you. It's the same knowledgeable and friendly staff, but a new look and new technology to ensure you get your prescriptions fast. We've always got you covered from prescriptions to all your home health needs. We've always been more than a pharmacy, still offering a huge selection of gifts and decor here at the new and improved Riggs Drugs. Hi, I'm Ann Love with Linda Kilgore State Farm Agency. I have worked in the insurance and financial services industry for over 20 years, formerly with the John R. W. Brown Agency. I'm a native Campbell County and enjoy helping people with their insurance needs. Stop by and see me for all your insurance needs. Tell you what, with these four machines, we've covered all the bases. We've got a party barge, 
a mud beast, and a couple of nasty ATVs for guys who just love to get dirty. Like the Razor High Lifter Edition, this machine is built for the mud. Basically, it's a water buffalo. It will take you through the mud and brush like you wouldn't believe. Why do my customers choose Husqvarna Power Equipment? And that's easy, because my landscaping crew has to rely on a durable product. I need the performance and quality that Husqvarna provides. And the innovative products that help me move on with my day. For maintenance parts or accessories, I don't have to go far. I know my Husqvarna dealer is right around the corner. Make the impossible possible and visit a Husqvarna dealer near you. Visit your local Husqvarna dealer or go to Husqvarna.com for more information. Okay, and we're ready. And welcome again to Camel County Issues, folks. And tonight, the True Value Homes over in Scott County, as I've told you many a times, you just have to go over and see it for yourself. And you'll love the prices, and you'll like the scenery. And they got the I-75 open to local traffic up to 141 now, and you don't have to worry about getting over there and getting back. And so get over there and check them out, and I greatly appreciate it. And Ron's Golf Carts Indoor Flea Market behind Long John Silver's, uh, Right now is the time to go down there, folks. Now, th those golf carts will go quick. And it, but he's out there always. In fact, everybody told me he had a, a golf cart coming from Knoxville tomorrow, which he'll purchase, and he'll put it out there on them. So you, 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 if you ever have a golf cart on a farm, you'll wonder why in the world didn't I do this a long time bef before I done it. And, and there, the, I, I, I got a rhino, but I'd rather have my golf cart 10 to 1 around the house. You just jump on it and shh, away you go. If you're a grandparent, you need a golf cart. Make you a hero with the grandkids. <laughs> oh, I reckon. Yeah. And also, uh, the White Knuckle event. Have you ever been to a White Knuckle event? No. What is that? Oh, man. Over in Scott County, we have uh, the four-wheeler stuff in May. May the 27th, 28th, 29th. And in, on the mountain, we'll have a, a concert, and then down at the river, we'll have a concert. And then in September, I'd say last September, we had, uh, and I'm not exaggerating, 30 to 40,000 people in our riding four wheelers and to, to the concert. And what's the white knuckle part? The white knuckle is the ride in the 300 miles of trails. 300 miles of trail, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't let go when you're done. Huh? <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, I, I got Mark up to talk to you folks a little bit more because, you know, uh, you can't talk enough about insurance, folks. You really can't. Now, right now, I, we're talking about if you're 65 years older, if you're becoming 65 years older mm. in the next three months, within the next three months, you need to be getting all the information. It doesn't cost you a dime to get all the information no. and make the right choice. So anyway, he can talk to you about that. I'm going to talk to you a little later about uh, uh, the roads uh, department and this lawsuit that we've talked about. I'm going to talk about Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton and Sanders and Cruz and Rubio and, and uh, Casey. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that tonight. Uh, and then there's two or three other things. Uh, I read Anna Hester's, this is a lady that writes for the paper here, and she's been writing for the paper about as long as I've been doing my show. Okay. Or she might have even started writing the paper before I started doing my show here in Camel County. But uh, she had an interesting uh, part in here today and, and her uh, Ann Hester's comments it's about we, we complain but do we have enough and just look around your house people how many cars people got in their driveway how many I mean all this stuff that we got stuff on top of stuff and it's very interesting so I'm gonna talk about that a little later but right now next 20 minutes is yours well I'm glad to be here and good evening Campbell County you know RL's right if your Medicare is getting ready to start if you're planning your retirement maybe later this year or you've just got a notification that you're going to be eligible for Medicare or maybe you're turning 65 in the next few months this is definitely the time to start gathering information now I know that your mailbox is going to be jam full 
but trying to figure out what plan's going to work for you, you know, they're all just advertising. They're not trying to help you figure out if your doctor will take it or what the plan premiums are. That's just advertisement. If you want help sorting through that pile of mail that you're probably putting off looking at that's on your kitchen table, if you're planning your retirement, you want to know what kind of plans will work for your budget, what kind of plans will work with your doctor networks, will your medicines be covered? What kind of a plan do I need? If you want information, if you want some help kind of understanding what the choices are, please give me a call. That's what I do. I never charge a fee. My phone number is one 866 691 Five five seven one. You've got so many good options, but folks, one size does not fit all when it comes to Medicare insurance. And not the truth. Um, your next door neighbor might have the best plan since sliced butter, and it might not be the right one for you. So pick the plan that works for you. And when you, when you have a lot of good options, there's no reason to just take the first one that comes along. And uh, if you've got ever any kind of questions like that, that's what I do. And uh, Now, if some folks are going to be qualifying for Medicare who have got 10 care as well. All right. Yeah. Okay. 10 care can be 10 care, or if you got Medicare and you get the extra help where you get the QMB card, that little pink card that goes with your Medicare, there are actually plans designed. They're called special needs plans that are available in our area. The special needs plan makes provisions for folks that uh, for extra benefits, things like routine eyeglasses, things like routine dental care, like extractions and crowns and fillings. Some of the plans plans will pay for those and many of the plans will actually help you pay for your over-the-counter items like cough and cold remedies and aspirins and things like that and when you're on a low fixed income you'd be surprised how many people I talk to that are doing without those types of things there's no need to do without them if you've got Medicare and TenCare or Medicare and QMB one of those plans most likely will fit for you and if you have any questions about it or if you want to see if you qualify please give me a call my phone number is 1-866-691-5571 yeah, now, they can call you anytime during the day or whatever. Call during the day. Yeah. Now, a lot of times I'll be out on a home visit, okay? You know, a lot of folks just invite me to come over to the house. That way we've got all your paperwork there. We can sit down and kind of shuffle through it and figure out what you need and what you don't need. And so if someone calls and uh, and I'm not sitting right there, I've got a reception. She'll get a message to me, and I'll give you a call back just as quick as I can. I can meet you somewhere. If you're in Knoxville, you can come to my office. But I'll tell you truth RL I'd say 90% of the people I meet with just want me to come over to the house and that makes it convenient for them and then if they've got paperwork or questions or things like that then uh, you know or, or sometimes they'll have a family member that wants to sit in and you know, somebody helps them kind of sort through their insurance and stuff like that and that's a great opportunity to do that especially some of the elderly you know in this area we have a lot of elderly that can't read well, we've got and, folks, and, and we've got and folks that who can't read or they don't have internet access, or we've got a lot of folks that have been taken advantage of over the phone when trying to, somebody trying to sign them up on a plan. Uh -huh. One of the things that happens is if you call some of these big insurance companies, they're going to try to sign you up because they've only got the one plan. They're not going to tell you about somebody else's plan. They're going to tell you about their plan and try to get you to sign up. So when I come to the table, I try to bring some options and I try to help you understand what the difference between this plan and this plan is. How do they work different? Why is there a difference in cost? Are my medications going to be covered? What's the cost of the medications? That's what I do when I sit down. And sometimes you don't get that when you try to sign yourself up over the phone. All right. So you can actually show them this, 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 and this, and this, and, and, mm -hmm. and it may be five or six different uh, insurance companies that you'll be working with. But and well, That's exactly and, right, and, RL. And I don't have every company. It just wouldn't be possible. I'd just have to spend all my right. time training on all of them. But the major companies I've got, and when I sit down with somebody, first thing I do is I find out what's important for your insurance to do for you. What are you looking for? Okay. Who are your doctors? Do you want to keep them? Okay. How much money do you want to spend? 
What are your prescriptions? Okay, what are you looking for in your prescription drug coverage? And when we when we get us kind of a snapshot after I've talked to you and listened to you for a while, that kind of gives me an idea since I've been working with these plans for quite a while, which ones are going to work and which ones aren't. So even though I might have six or seven or eight different plans, we may be narrowing it down to talking about one or two just based on the fact of what you're looking for and who your doctors are. And now let me ask you another question. Now, if you if, if a Say I call you, and you come out and you had ten, uh, three plans or whatever. We worked it down to one plan. You you never charge me nothing, do you? I've never charged you a thing, RL, and I don't charge folks anything. The way it works is I'm an insurance consultant, okay? I've got contracts with all these insurance companies. So what happens is if you enroll in one of their plans, that insurance company will compensate me. That's how I make right. my and, living. And, and so you right. pay an insurance company, not right. you. Right. And so the good thing about working with somebody that's independent is I don't have to meet a certain number of enrollments with any particular company. So there's no reason for me to push plan A over plan B or anything like that. Basically, when we sit down, I let you know where I'm at. I listen to you. You tell me where you're at. And I say, based on what you're telling me, looks like these plans are lying out for you. And, and, and there's so many of those plans out there, folks, that, that actually, it's according to India, uh, I guess, your needs or your wants. Mm. Is A lot of that is no cost it to you at all. There are a lot of plans that have zero premiums. Folks that have Medicare and Ten Care, there's plenty of plans that don't cost anything available for them. Uh, folks that have uh, particular doctor requirements, there's plans that'll meet them with a small premium. The biggest idea to get in your mind is that it's not just one company is the best company. It's based on what do you want out of your plan. Sometimes it's based on where you live. You know, I've got folks up in Scott County live along the border with Kentucky. They live in Tennessee, but they've got to go across the border in Kentucky because that's where their doctor's at. Yeah. Well, there's particular plans that if they took, they wouldn't be able to do that. So I help them find plans that allow them to go across the state line and use their insurance over there as well. Now, down here, there wouldn't be any need for you to pay extra for a plan like that because your doctors are right here local. That's why you want to meet with somebody that knows what the different types of plans are and how they work. Well, so let's just say, okay, I'm going to turn, uh, I'm just saying I'm, but I'm much older than that, folks. But <laughs> let's say, say if, if I was going to turn 65 years old on my birthday in July. Right. So right now is the time. Right now, I'm, if you're going to turn 65 anytime in the next six months, it's time to start talking to me. If you're going to turn 65 anytime in the next six months, here's why. First thing you've got to do is you've got to let Social Security know that, hey, I want my Medicare to start. Okay, sometimes it'll tar start automatically, but there's a lot of people who keep on working and don't take their Medicare right off the bat, and they've got to get their Part B going. Okay, so you know the best time to establish a relationship is before you're in a hurry. So give me a call. I can kind of tell you what the things are that you need to do ahead of time, so you can't get additional insurance until your Medicare is in place. Okay, that gives us enough time that we can get to know each other a little better. We can figure out which plans will kind of work for you. You can take care of the things that you need to before you turn 65, and we can get your plan in place so it starts at the same time that your Medicare does. So, and I, I, I might have misunderstood you just then. So, if I don't, if I, if, if I turn 65 and I don't take my Medicare, right, then I can't insure myself. Let's say that uh, you're working and you're age 66, uh -huh. okay? Your Medicare Part A would have started automatically when you turned 65. That's your hospitalization, okay? Uh, okay? Part A, for most people, never has a premium. That's the part that you get because you paid payroll taxes. Uh -huh. Okay, now you've got the option of whether you want to take Part B or not. If you're still working and you've got insurance through your employer, it might not make sense for you to pay the premium for Part B. You know, Part B right now, if you sign up for it, it's $121, I think it is. Okay? So there's a lot of people that if they work past the age of 65, don't enroll in Part B because there's no need. You know, they would be double insured. They'd be paying for their work insurance and paying for Medicare. Uh -huh. But what happens is now all of a sudden they're going to get ready to turn 67. They've got to notify Social Security that they want their Part B to start. And Social Security doesn't know that. So you've got to get your Part B going before you can get a supplement or an Advantage plan. Okay, The plans like you've got, like most people are talking about, 
you have to have, in order to get additional medical and hospital coverage, your Part B has to be in place and set to start. Uh -huh. Now, you can get prescription drug coverage if you only have Part A. Okay, but most people go ahead and do Part A and Part B. So if you've got a, a delayed Part B enrollment, if anything we're talking about sounds interesting to you or it's confused, you please give me a call. We'll make sure we Well, you can call us right it. now and yeah. take names. And we got plenty of room on the phone lines right here. There's only about four or five backed up. If you call in, <laughs> promise it won't be on hold very long. No. But, uh, no, there's, uh, you know, and there's, that's what I'm saying. Not everybody's situation is the same way. You know, a lot of people qualify for Medicare through disability before the age 65. Okay, once they, once they qualify for their disability through Social Security Administration, there's a 24-month waiting period. After they've been drawing their Social Security on disability for 24 months, most of the time their Medicare goes ahead and kicks in automatically. So you could have someone age 55 that's got Medicare. Uh -huh. Okay? So somebody that could be aging in at age 65 or somebody who qualifies through disability for Medicare, you got all types of scenarios and not every one of those is going to be identical. That's why you need somebody that will take the time to sit down and find out enough about you, what's going on with you, what's important to you, so that when you make a choice about your plan, you looked at your options and you know why that plan is the one that you want to have. Okay. Now, and let's just say that, uh, okay. I, as you all know, I have my eyes done, and I've had since I've been I've had four operations since I've been doing this show, and and I've, uh, all together I've had twelve major operations in my life. So, with my eyes, my I just got the bill today. It's two hundred ninety-five dollars, and that's above whatever the surgery was. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of insurance would I have to have? that would have paid that 100%, how much more would I have to? Well, right now you pay zero. Your plan has a zero premium. Right. So you're paying for your Medicare Part B premium. The plan you have has a zero. If you wanted to get rid of everything else, and you're how old now, 70? I'm um, 74. 74? I would guess that you'd be probably close to $200 a month in premium if Hang you on. to do that. Oh, okay. So I'm better off because I have you I have spent because I've been on it now for what three years. Three years now, and yep. and so uh, I've spent in the last uh, I see three hundred and forty, three hundred and forty, six hundred and eighty, and two hundred. Uh, so I've paid over a thousand. I'm still saving you money. I'm still saving money. Yep. Okay, so you're on the air. Okay, you're on the air. Well, I'm trying to find out. I like to talk to that interest man. I just a little bit. So let's just take you go ahead. Okay. Hey, I picked up the phone. This is Mark. So anyway, folks, just hang with us, and we're we're going to yes, have sir. some interesting uh, conversations here in just a little while. Yes, sir. Supplement, yes, sir. Oh, I understand that. I sure do. Uh, yes, sir. Would I be able to call you tomorrow morning, and and I can kind of give you some more detail and find out a little bit more about you, and I can give you, I can be a little bit more specific with you then. Uh, um, no, sir, it'd probably be about 11 o'clock. I've got a meeting that gets over about 10.45. Would that be okay? Okay, can I get your phone number, sir? All righty. You sure that's right? Okay. All righty. I, I appreciate it. Can I get your first name, sir? All righty. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. All righty. I'll give you a call around 11 o'clock. That'd be all right. Thank you for calling. All right. Bye-bye. He lives over in Caribou, Lake City area. 
I didn't know we had that. I didn't. I didn't recognize it, but he told me it twice. So. Huh. Okay. So, the gentleman there just had a question. He's a little bit older, been paying a very high price for his premium for a lot of years, and mm. just recently qualified for the low income subsidy. Okay. So they're kind of in a in a situation where they're you know started out with a plan that was fairly inexpensive years ago. Okay, but now the cost has gone up to the point where it's a hardship. Okay, yeah. and so they may have options on how to switch to a different type well, of plan. Even if it's not a hardship, if there's plans out there, just like myself, mm -hmm. me and my wife, w w uh, over a five-year period, we spent over twelve thousand dollars for insurance that we didn't have to pay. That's right. That's right. Well, sometimes folks will buy a, an expensive policy because it pays for everything. Yeah. Okay. Now they've got one of these real high dollar expensive plans and it works real good you know when you first when you first retire you think things are going to be better than they are and then about a year into it you realize how much how little money you've got and what will happen is they'll have one of these plans and they never set foot in a doctor's office and every month that big insurance premium goes out and they say well i had 100 percent coverage i said yeah how many times you go to the doctor and they go once i said well guess how much you paid for that doctor's office <laughs> yes. you're on the air <laughs> Uh, a couple of months ago, I received a notice from Social Security and Medicare, or whatever. You know, health care would no longer be available in this area. So, I went to Rick in downtown Santa Fe, and the guy, he was a nice guy, and he said that I should have Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Why was I transferred? I mean, why, why was I denied Blue Cross and Blue Shield? I mean, not that, but Medicare and United Healthcare. I'm not sure the exact reason. I've heard several different stories on that. United Healthcare left about five counties in East Tennessee, and unfortunately, Campbell County was one of them. Now, when that plan was pulled out of Campbell County, then you had to you had to actually change to a different company. Otherwise, you'd have just been on your straight Medicare by yourself. So I'm glad you've got something besides just the Medicare. As far as the exact reason, I never did get the exact reason and everything I've heard has just been kind of hearsay but uh, you know the, the good news is is you got with somebody and they helped you get a plan so you wouldn't do without I kind of feel like I was forced into that and, yes sir you, know, you didn't you didn't have a choice you could it. I yeah. it no sir when a plan leaves a county or a plan leaves a state if, you know if Medicare pulls it out then you've got you don't have a choice to keep it and that's and, what happened. And, and, and the man that at Riggs was, was do, uh, telling you the truth you I mean, yeah. it, it, no matter who you talk to, it wasn't going to be that way. That was a, that was a move that the federal government and, and United Healthcare or United Healthcare. I'm not sure who it was, but that wasn't a move that you had any choice in. So the fellow that helped you was right. If he told you you had to change, you wouldn't have had any insurance if he didn't help you. Well, uh, health, health in some people still have Medicare in this area. When it was uh, told on the on the letters that I got that. They were no longer going to cover anybody in this area. Uh, there were only two plans. Only two plans that were affected. No one who had ten care was affected in any way, and no one who had a Medicare supplement through AARP was affected. There were only two plans. They were HMO plans, and those were the only people that were affected by that. So yes, there are people in Scott in in Campbell County that still have United Healthcare, and it still works for them. And you know the reasoning for that, I really couldn't tell you, but uh, it, it was a real confusing time for all of us. Well, I I, I, I was listening to. Some something that you said sir you said that, uh, that uh, evidently your Medicare was taken away yes my Medicare and you know I did uh, 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 how old are you anybody in this area how old are you 68 well, how did he didn't lose his Medicare you couldn't have lost your Medicare sir he, he just lost his United Health Care plan he had to switch well, he, the letter said. right uh, you, uh, well, I'd say you need to see Mark and, and let him look at that letter. I, yeah, I can't really tell without seeing the letter what it actually, you know, what it's actually explaining to you. But uh, that would be highly unusual. I, I would like to see that. My phone number is, uh, if you give me a call, I'll be glad to talk to you tomorrow. Um, it's one eight six six. Wait, just one second. Okay. Uh, eight six six. 
866-691-5571. And just ask for Mark. They'll get you right through to me. Okay. All right, sir. Appreciate you calling. Thank you. Okay. You, you give us your last spiel because I'm running you off. <laughs> Folks, give me a call, 1-866-691-5571. I try to help folks who have Medicare find plans that will work for them based on their own individual needs. I'm going to let you take this. Oh. You're on the air. Yeah, come to, uh, come to Martha. Okay, hey, we're going to go ahead and take a break. We'll be back after these words from our sponsors. Hey y'all, it's Mark Beckman with Insurance Consultants. Appreciate you tuning in tonight. You're used to seeing Blake McCoy sitting here and uh, tonight I'm going to sit in and if you need any questions answered about Medicare, TenCare, how these benefits work together, do you qualify for extra help, those sorts of things, I can sure help out. Please give me a call 866-691-5571. Raise Axe. Raise has a friendly service with a family environment. With that country kick, it's a family owned with delicious food. Offering breakfast, lunch, supper all day long, and great steaks, wonderful salmon. Also for that sweet tooth, pies and much more. For the kids, games, daily specials, dine in or carry out. Call 423-569-3354. Call Raise Axe today. Riggs Drugs has been a part of Campbell County for generation after generation, serving our friends and neighbors. And now we have redesigned our store to better serve you. It's the same knowledgeable and friendly staff, but a new look and new technology to ensure you get your prescriptions fast. We've always got you covered from prescriptions to all your home health needs. We've always been more than a pharmacy, still offering a huge selection of gifts and decor here at the new and approved Riggs Drugs. Hi, I'm Linda Kilgore. This is my 35th year with State Farm, my 25th year here in Campbell County. I'm not a high pressure salesman. I like to just sit down with my customers and help them decide what's right for them. Thank you and I hope to see you soon. With these four machines, we've covered all the bases. We've got a party barge, a mud beast, a couple of nasty ATVs for guys who just love to get dirty. Like the Razor High Lifter Edition, this machine is built for the mud. Basically, it's a water buffalo. It will take you through the mud and brush like you wouldn't believe. Why do my customers choose Husqvarna Power Equipment? That's easy, because my landscaping crew has to rely on a durable product. I need the performance and quality that Husqvarna provides. And the innovative products that help me move on with my day. For maintenance parts or accessories, I don't have to go far. I know my Husqvarna dealer is right around the corner. Make the impossible possible and visit a Husqvarna dealer near you. Visit your local Husqvarna dealer or go to Husqvarna.com for more information. Okay, folks, we're back again. Let me tell you about uh, this big deal, the White Knuckle, is coming in May 27th, 28th, and 29th, I believe it is, folks. But anyway, I'll get you more when we get closer to it. And Ron's Golf Cart and Indoor Flea Market. Uh, I was down there today had, checking around. He's got a lot of stuff in there. And, you know, springtime's coming. And, now, and I'll tell you something else. You know, if you've got some antiques or something that you, you know, uh, you're wanting to get rid of or you're needing a little extra money, now he buys them also. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a business. Yeah, he has the prices for what he has you, he's got to be low enough to where he can make a dollar off of it or something other. But uh, at least, you know, it's better than taking it to the, and throwing it in the junkyard because he can take some of that stuff and absolutely, he makes it look good and he, he fixes them up and it's great. Also, True Value Homes, uh, 
if somebody if you know anybody out there that wants to buy a house a big house and and it's in the neighborhood of a, 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 it's a, it's a healthy price but it's a wonderful big house uh, they can give me a call and I'd be happy to move into one of these uh, houses at True Value Homes at the prices they have I, I'm, and just me and my wife now I, we, we could live good in one of those real good so anyway check them out at True Value Homes it's 663 8633 now I've got several little topics I want to talk to you about tonight but I got one that I, I, I need to take care of uh, I talked to the uh, the gentleman that, that, that we talked about the courtroom down at Jacksboro last week about the so many people having to stand out in the hall no seats for the elderly. Now, there's a couple of issues that I'd like to talk about, uh, Miss Salmons. But I want you, you. I don't want to to uh, do something that Miss Salmons didn't have any control over. As far as having everybody out of the courtroom, I found out because it's juvenile court, then by law she can't have. So that's that. I want I want to be fair on everything. When I do something, I want to find out. I don't want to be uh, unfair with any of these things. But now the. The one call that I got from this lady about the three grandchildren, and she got on here and she talked, and those three grandchildren, uh, they're not blood, but when you raise a child and they have children, they're your grandchildren. And, and what I understand from more than one phone call, more than the call here. Uh, I have a problem with the ruling on that particular case. and But again, I don't know every little detail in that. But I believe, because I am a grandparent, and folks, if I know that I wasn't doing anything wrong, my personal, me personally, I've got a 23-year-old granddaughter that's today. 23 years old today. I got one that's 21 years old. Or 20. She'll be, in November, she'll be 21. And I got a little grandson. Now, folks, if they need me, going to be there and I feel like at this grandmother that called here the other night is wanting to be there and then she told her age now these, these are younger kids but still my grandmother and grandfather you just have to, to remember back whenever I was a child at five years old in 1940 seven my grandparents were in their 50 and one was in his 60s at a five year old now I can't see how a judge or any judge can take deny a grandparent from keeping their children versus foster parents. I have nothing against foster parents. 
thank God we've got foster parents. But unless I could find some concrete crap, I would I would always put those kids into their grandparents' home. I mean, I'd have to find some and like if if my if their father was a murderer or a drug addict or whatever they are. Now I would keep them away, but I would not deny those grandparents. And I can't understand this one. I have a problem with it. You're on the air. Well, I ain't one thing right now. I know that I'm in. I know that I'm in the wrong place. I know and they could put me on a polygraph test or anything. And anything they said about me absolutely is not true. And I put my daughter in this home because the Adult Protective Service agitated her. And it's all because of funding. It don't have anything to do with they think I abused her. They don't even think that. And because I reported the group home, I won't mention names, they stopped me completely from talking to my daughter after calling her since 2013 every day, at least twice a day. So now I can't talk to her at all. And when my husband, her dad, is a veteran, and he can just walk a few short steps, his health is really bad. And he said, you know, talk in the background, why can't we talk to our daughter? And as I think I've told you before, the lady that's supposed to get paid taxpayers' dollars to help families, said, I think we better end this call. I think her husband's getting agitated. And they say he's got dementia. He might not even have dementia. Mm. And like saying, I was arrested, and I, I haven't been down there. It stirred me so much to check my background. Mm. But absolutely, Dennis Parr said it was on record that I was arrested. And so help me, I have never been arrested in my life. And, and I, when we walk into the VA clinic, we see Governor Haslam's picture. And I called his office today twice. And I said, I'm going to tell you what, it makes me want to vomit to look at your picture. Because he is, a, he's a using these people for finding, and he don't want to listen to what I have to say. Because it's too much money involved in okay. it. Absolutely, my daughter is being abused in this group home, and I don't have no money to do anything about it. And, it, and probably you would have to have so much money, I'll probably never be able to do anything about it. Okay. But I absolutely would go on any kind of polygraph test. These people absolutely is not telling the truth. Okay. And then you're, you're now, like my husband's a veteran. I read online where the, like, the government, they can go build homes for, for free and everything to these people. Funding has destroyed people, not just in Tennessee, every state. It's got to be stopped some way, and I'm going to fight to get a law passed to get this stopped in every state. Because mm -hmm. it has destroyed me for the rest of my life. There are no, there are no healing in it. It's destroyed our family totally. I don't care if, if Governor Haslam would say, I'll give you a billion dollars. I'd say that won't help the situation. You've destroyed my life forever. Okay. And, I, and they don't want, I said to you, Adult Protective Service or no one else took my daughter. Oh, let's go on to the next set. It has all out. The reason I called you is I know that you said one time that there wasn't nothing made you any matter than seeing someone abused. My 
my daughter is absolutely abused in this group home, and I can't do nothing about it. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I wish I know. I wish I just know and had the power to get the truth of some of that stuff. I really do. And one of the reasons why I had a plan in 1990, started in 1990, whenever I, that's 26 years ago, that I wanted to do something about child abuse, child molestation, uh, get drunk drivers off the road. I wanted to talk about that kind of stuff. Now I'm going to tell you something. No matter how much we talk, there's no there's no answer to to drugs. There's just no answer for it. Because we talked. Well, let me say this before I get to there. Since Christmas, just a day or two before Christmas, there was a man that in Scott County that killed a man because the, the, the person that was trying to steal one of his relatives truck that was set in, in his yard and he killed a 20 year old man uh, pulling out of the driveway with, a, with that truck. He fired several shots at, at the truck and one of them hit this 20 year old in the head and killed him. Now I don't know uh, the whole answer to that. But since then we've had two, we had a, a husband and a wife, a husband killed his wife, beat her to death, beat her to death. Then he drives to his sister's house and gets out of his car and kills himself, 45 years old. We had a, another man Friday. No, yeah, Friday, a young man, 30 years old, hung himself or killed himself committed suicide in my community and then Saturday I guess it was a man he's a school bus driver killed his wife and then he killed himself I, those are those are very bad. Uh, I don't know what's happening. You know, we're we're a small county as far as population is concerned, folks. A very small county. We got plants that's advertising needing help, needing workers. You got one right up here at one forty one need workers can't get workers and 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 we're complaining everybody's complaining to us everything's so bad so bad so bad well man you can't go to a restaurant on friday and saturday night and and get in to sit down you have to wait you can't go to the mountains it, so i don't know what's so bad with our world that we we don't want to be here anymore and you don't know what's, I mean, I don't know what's happening to those people and, and wish I did know. And, but, and, and now I'm going to go back here to, to what brought this subject up and what I feel. This grandmother is wanting her kids. And I'm not saying anything bad about those people that either kill somebody or kill themselves or what. 
we don't know what's out here in this world. But when you put kids out into foster homes, you don't know what you're uh, exactly what you're putting out there. You don't. But you know enough about this grandmother. Now, if she, and she plainly said, my son has a problem. Find a way to keep my son away. These grandchildren needs a mom or needs somebody and don't separate them. You're on the air. Uh, yes, Ariel. I was talking about the uh, children. Uh, there is a law in the state of Tennessee and grandparents do not have any thing, you know. I think that's, I think that's been changed some. Has it? Well, yeah. I know uh, back in 2008 right. that way because I went and talked to a lawyer about my two granddaughters. But let me ask you this. If, if I have a son or a daughter that definitely shouldn't be around their kids because of problems that they have. That's my, uh, um, no matter what, that's my son, that's my grandchildren. Right. And, and if that law, it, it, I don't think that law is in, in effect anymore. I think it, it has been changed. Okay. But, because I went to, the, to a lawyer to talk to him to see what I could do. Because at that time, I was afraid for them to be with their mother. Uh huh. And so eventually she turned the children over to me. And we didn't go through court or anything. She just brought them to my house and, and uh, I started taking care of them. Mm -hmm. One was eight and one was ten. Well, I can attest to that because let me tell you, my mother brought me to my grandma and grandpa's uh -huh. and she dropped us off and she said, and I don't remember it, but I was told by her and I was told by my father that she brought us there because my father was, wasn't working, wasn't living where, I, where my grandma and grandpa lived, but he was somewhere else working out of town, but they said, I can't take care of them. Uh -huh. Will you take them? Yep. And they took me and, and, and my little brother, which uh, later got, about a year later, he got burned up in the house. Yeah. And anyway, my grandma and grandpa raised me, and their youngest child was eight years older than me. Well, the two, two girls I have belongs to my youngest son, and uh, he was... Uh, I think he's 47. I'm getting so old, I can't remember. <laughs> well. Anyway, he's 49, so uh, he'll be in April. Okay. But uh, I, I took the two girls, me and my husband, and we finished raising them. Uh, their mother passed away in 2008, and my husband passed away in 2009. But the girls have been right here. Uh, they both started into college. They made good grades all the way through school. You know, no problem at all. As far as you're concerned, they're your daughters. Yes. Yes, they are. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. But I just wondered about that law because I... I think, th I think that law has changed somewhat, yes. I, I'm pretty sure it has. Yeah, because some of these kids don't have anybody except grandparents. R right. So I think they should have changed it a long time ago. Uh, well, uh, you know, I've got two two kids, and they both got kids. And uh, well, got uh, two girls, and I talk, mentioned those. And then I've got a, uh, a a grandson in which he has good parents, but they could bring him at my house now and leave him, and and I'd be just as happy as a lark. So would his grandmother, but he would be too. Appreciate your call. Thank you. Thank you. You're on the air. Yes, I understand that you said the boy was over in Scott County stealing a truck. Do what? I understand you were on the air saying that the boy who was shot and they they assumed that this guy assumed that the boy was uh, stealing the truck. Well, the boy that owned the truck was with him, so they weren't stealing it. He was just yeah. trying to get back what was his. Well, uh, but what I'm saying, the guy, the guy 
I, I, I'm a, and let me tell you something. If they was, if they wasn't still in my family, my, I would never shoot anybody over a, a truck or a, or a, a car or I wouldn't shoot any, and kill somebody over any material thing. Now, mess with my family, uh, I, I hurt you. But especially shooting seventeen times. Yeah, I, 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 that's what I. That's what I was getting at. I, I can't. I can't understand that. Yeah. It, Can you? It was senseless. Stupid. Why? I mean, but why? I mean, the, the truck or, or the material can't never. I mean, you can always recover that or whatever. You can't recover that body. You could call the police and report it stolen. How many trucks like that are going to be out on the road that time of night in Scott County? No, no matter where it's at. Right. If I was in the middle of Detroit City and and, and I come out and somebody's, I'm not going to start shooting into that car to kill somebody. Okay. Well, we just thought you were saying. No, 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 no. Killing the truck. But. No, no. The, the, well, it, you know, this guy might have assumed or whatever. But if it was stealing, it, it doesn't matter to me. Right. I, I'm not going to kill somebody over uh, any piece of. Are you? A Twenty-year-old kid. Right. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter what age, but he was just 20 years old. Right. No, I, 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 think, I think it's ludicrous. All right. Thank you. Thank you. No, I, I, I mean, why would anyone, I mean, now, if you was messing with my wife and my family, or, and if I seen you out there, uh, 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 with a little kid, uh, now, if you're molesting a little kid and, and having a sexual uh, uh, with with a small kid or two year old or something like uh, there's there, I know there's two people, two people. It, since I've been doing these shows, in which the uh, first week of next month, I know of two people that's been prosecuted in Scott County for molesting a two year old or a, and a three year old. Now I might pop a cap on someone like that, and and probably not lose any sleep over it, and be willing to go to jail for a, probably the rest of my life. Cause I, in my way of seeing things, now that person may be may not have maybe been mentally ill, might not have a good mind at all. But we all know that people that do that kind of they definitely don't have. They they've got problems, real problems. But and they don't need to be in society. And I know they can take them out here and put them. I, I don't think they should put them in hard labor or whatever. Put them in a home or somewhere where they can be safe. They don't need to be out in with children. And how many? Well, anyway, I, I get carried away with this stuff because I get I get so mad about it. I'm gonna take this call and then I'll, we'll go after I, this call, okay? No, I'll take it after break because I know who, and, and I will come back to you so you can call me back, okay? We could take a break and I'll be back right out of these words from our sponsors. Hey, this is Mark with Insurance Consultants. You're used to seeing Blake McCoy sitting here, and uh, I'm up here cutting a new commercial for y'all to look at. Uh, I help people with have Medicare and TennCare, and if you've got any questions about what you're eligible for, whether you should be getting extra benefits, is your plan changing, or do you even need anything to go with your Medicare, those are the types of questions I can help you with. Please give me a call at 1-866-691-5571. I'll be glad to give you a call, and as always, we charge nothing nothing for our services. If we can help you in any way, we'll be glad to do it. Y'all have a good day. Welcome to Ray's Axe. Ray's Axe has a friendly service with a family environment. With that country kick, it's a family owned with delicious food. Offering breakfast, lunch, supper all day long, and great steaks, wonderful salmon. Also for that sweet tooth, pies and much more. For the kids, games, daily specials, dine in or carry out. Call 423-569-3354. Call Ray's Axe today. 
Riggs Drugs has been a part of Campbell County for generation after generation, serving our friends and neighbors. And now we have redesigned our store to better serve you. It's the same knowledgeable and friendly staff, but a new look and new technology to ensure you get your prescriptions fast. We've always got you covered from prescriptions to all your home health needs. We've always been more than a pharmacy, still offering a huge selection of gifts and decor here at the new and improved Riggs Drugs. Hi, my name is Jeremy Pierce. I may not be Jake from State Farm, but I do wear khakis. I've been here with Linda Kilgore's office for two years. I enjoy helping uh, people make a decision regarding their insurance based on their needs and wants. I'm fully licensed. I enjoy selling uh, auto, home, and life insurance. So feel free to come in or call in any time and I'll be glad to help you. Tell you what, with these four machines, we've covered all the bases. We got a party barge, a mud beast, a couple of nasty ATVs for guys who just love to get dirty. Like the Razor High Lifter Edition, this machine is built for the mud. Basically, it's a water buffalo. It will take you through the mud and brush like you wouldn't believe. Why do my customers choose Husqvarna Power Equipment? And that's easy because my landscaping crew has to rely on a durable product. I need the performance and quality that Husqvarna provides. And the innovative products that help me move on with my day. For maintenance parts or accessories, I don't have to go far. I know my Husqvarna dealer is right around the corner. Make the impossible possible and visit a Husqvarna dealer near you. Visit your local Husqvarna dealer or go to Husqvarna.com for more information. Welcome back, folks. Again, uh, Ron's Golf Cart and Indoor Flea Market can bring in you tonight's show. And again, if you've ever, ever one time, you go rent, he actually rents carts. If you want to go rent one and take it at your place, and you've got uh, on a, even a small farm, or if you've got a, a 100 yards, 200, 300 yards that you've got to run to the mailbox or you've got to run to this or that or, or somebody's neighbor's house and you're in your 60s or 70s, it's so much like you, you never be without one if you could. And, and right now he's got one down there that's uh, got brand new batteries in it for $1,500. And you know, those. Uh, battery ones, they very seldom they will ever uh, conk out on you. You just have to keep them uh, uh, charged up. Well, anyway, I know we got excited about that, and 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 uh, I just wanted to get that one off my chest, and I and and I just hope that uh, whatever happens with those three grandchildren, that they can be together. And and I, I and what I would hope more than anything that the father would get his self under control with whatever because the answers are definitely not in those pills or in alcohol. It's not there. And kids, you know, they mean a lot. And folks, I could have gotten to every kind of trouble that possibly could have been. Because there wasn't anything out there to keep me from it. Because I just I had a curfew. I had a plan for myself. I planned to do this way before I ever started doing it. Because I needed something other to keep me busy or keep my mind on what I'm doing. Because if I don't use my mind, I'm, I'll, I won't be long. I'll, I won't even re remember my name. So anyway, I, I, I will keep an eye on this and I hope that the person that, that's uh, trying to get their kids, I hope it happens for you. And I hope it, uh, it turns out right. I wouldn't want you to have them back if you're just going to abuse them or not treat them right, but uh, the talks that we've had and this, it sounds like love to me. And anyway,
anyway, now <laughs> I want to I want to talk to y'all a little bit about the presidential uh, primaries that's going on right now. Now I don't know, you know, tomorrow we will have two states, Mississippi and Michigan. Now if in the Republican Party, if, if Cruz could knock off uh, Trump in Michigan and Mississippi, things might change. But I don't, I don't see them changing. And, and I never, well, I've been watching and keeping up with presidential elections even when Eisenhower You know, I was just a, a young man when Eisenhower was president. I mean, I wasn't. Even, I was still in elementary. And in fact, about it, I, I kept up with. And I've told you this story before about they actually call me Ike. And anyway, I have a problem, even with Trump, and I'm not for Trump. But whenever the whole establishment says, no matter what you do, then if you don't get, if you come up 10 votes short or whatever, we will make sure that you will not be our candidate. We, you can't be our candidate. Well, he, he made pledges after pledges after pledges, and I can't stand the man now. But, this, the due process, he's going through the due and how can, and I'd like to get some of the, and, and in fact, but I'd like to hear, I'd even like to hear from anybody out there. Anybody. I mean, I know that there's two or three people out there, and I'll shut up. That are, are definitely die hard uh, Republicans. Do you actually believe that? I mean, we don't, I don't want the Republican Party to go away. We need checks and balances. But we're getting to, to the point, folks, I would, Ted Cruz, to my, in my opinion, would be the worst thing that ever happened to our country. He would be trying to take us back to the Ayatollah and those kind of people. I believe in prayer, but I don't want to be praying ten times a day or twelve times a day or whatever. It is. I don't want to. I don't want someone telling me what I have to do when it comes to my religion or my beliefs. And I don't want anybody else telling anybody in America that. And some people say, and has called me and talked to me about uh, uh, faith and religion. Our country was not found on religion. It was founded on the freedom. That's why we've been the greatest country on this earth. And we'll remain as long as we keep that same kind of belief. And, and it's... It bothers me. It actually worries me. And I don't know. Um, I got a, I got three friends that I, I meet once a week with, and we talk politics. We do it. Been doing it for years. 
They all three like politics just like I do. One of them's been in uh, elected official for several, several years. One of them is a retired army uh, sergeant. And one of them's a, biz a businessman. It's been a very successful businessman in Scott County for many years. And they're all three as hard shell Republicans, but they're my friends. And they say I'm crazy, but I would just, it was just the way I raised. And, and I have the freedom to believe the way I want to believe, the freedom to go get in my car and go whenever and come whenever I please. But you hear some of the way these some of these people are talking, it's just absolutely scaring me to death. Even Barney Sanders is scaring me to death. And some of the things that Miss Clinton's saying is scaring me to death. I don't know who. The only one that 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 really and I told these three guys that I meet with every week and you know, have for years, and you can go ask them. And I told them, whenever it first started, I mean right when it first I said, don't forget John Kasich. This guy, he helped balance the budget. He was very, very active in it. He done a lot of work. He's really, and he took over Ohio, and he done great. And you know, I voted for Ronald Reagan the second time around, and I didn't like his second term. I liked his first term, but I said I'd never, never vote for a Republican president again. Now I didn't say I wouldn't vote for because I do vote for Republicans. I voted for. Uh, Lamar Alexander every time he's run but this last time and this last time he got into the he wasn't the moderate because some of the stuff is going so far to the right he got in it a little too deep for me but anyway I told him John Casey and, and looks what he's done for Ohio and now he's he's I know he's in fourth place but Next Tuesday night, not tomorrow night, but Tuesday week, when Ohio votes and he wins that, and if he could win a Michigan tomorrow, look out. Because it could be a broker convention in Cleveland, in Cleveland now, in Ohio, where, his, where he's from, folks, he could be, he could be named the the winner and 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 I don't think that's right. I, I I mean I might even vote for him. But if Trump gets all those votes and they deny, then they're they're going to split the Republican Party. It'll never be back the same. You're on the air. Hey, are you just talking about uh, John Casey up in Ohio, Michigan? Uh huh. He's already closed the gap on Trump and them. He's uh, six on one and eight uh, percent on the other ah. with Trump. Well, he could win it. Yeah, and he's in second already. A in Michigan and Ohio. And both of them, yeah. Well, if he could win both of them, I mean, I've not got to listen to him. One thing, I hope he, if he, <laughs> if he does, I hope he wins it because I hope, I hope they send Trump back out there to his bill. Trump's crazy. Trump, uh, Trump will put us in, in, in a bad position, buddy. If, if, you, if there's any man that can go out there and think that they can be so powerful and threatening that they can and tell these countries uh, exactly what they're going to do and be so bold about it. Now, behind the scenes, you can, you, you can deal with a little, uh, uh, be a little bit bold, but Publicly, you can't. No, you've got to have a little bit of negotiation, no matter what. Trump, I'm 
Tell you, that man scares the living crap out of me. He does me too. I mean, he absolutely. And folks, I, I don't care who, if you're a Republican or if you're a Democrat. I don't either. I, I really don't. I, I, me either. And, and locally, you know, you can't you can't vote for anybody locally that's a Democrat because the the everybody in this area just about it votes Republican. Now, <laughs> <laughs> this is like. Dennis Powers. I read the day where Dennis Powers is going to run again. And maybe he'll run his republic. Will there be a Democrat come out against Dennis Powers? They haven't yet. They won't. No, they won't. Because they, they, they know they can't win. No. Now, I had, I had a, a, a guest on with me last night, a, a young man that's running against uh, the, the uh, uh, representative from, from Scott, for Scott County. And he's from Scott County. And uh, he's a young man that's 37 years old. And uh, one of the guys called in and said, uh, well, whenever he come on, let me put it this way. Whenever he come on, he says, and he talked for about 15, 20 minutes. And he said, you know, I'm against Common Core, that meaning, you know, in the education. I'm 100% uh, well, it's against abortion, okay? Yeah. 100%. And anyway, he, he, he rattled off a whole bunch of stuff, and he's running for and the Republican Party. And some guy called in and said, uh, how many times have you voted Democrat? He said, I've voted Democrat just about as much as I have Republican or maybe more. Yeah. He said, because I vote for who I think is going to be the best for my uh, for my area, who's going to work with my with me in my area, who's going to, and but I'm telling you what I believe in, and and the things that I believe in is more uh, in tune with. Uh, oh, good Lord! Why why can I say this word? If you're if you're against uh, your Against abortion, uh, the right, right to live. Yeah. Uh, the pro life. Yeah. yeah, he's pro life, uh, and he uh, well, and this guy, this guy tried to try to paint him as being a Democrat. He said, "No, I'm an independent, but I'm running on the Republican uh, platform." Oh, it's to get elected. Yeah. You, I tell you what, if you was the best person on earth. You had the best ideals, and you've never been mean to nobody. If you've got Democrat in front of your name, you can't win in Scott County or Camel County. No, I wish Bob Bannon would come out and run against Dennis Powers. Well, uh, but he I, won't, I don't think. But I wish he would. Well, I'll tell you another thing, though. Let's just say right now, and and I'm not, and, and I'm not, uh, as far as Dennis Powers, I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you this, I do know, Republican and Democrat parties in this area, you get, you can get plenty of money from the party to run oh, yeah. as a Republican. You can't get the money in uh, as a Democrat. No, that's just like uh, uh, they, you know, down there at the courthouse, they, it, it's not that they're Democrat, which they may be, which they are. Down there, they haven't got a raise at all down on that tax uh, place in I think about eight or nine years. I know. I mean, how and people expect them to keep working and for and, 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 and there's a, got to be a, something other put in a, as a cost of living. Yeah. And and it just don't make okay. sense. I don't know if you believe this or not, but I hear I hear some people talking. Said, "Well, hey, I can't vote for that." Said, "I just can't vote for him." Said, "I like everything he's done. He's done a great job, but I can't vote for him because he's a Democrat." And that's just. And don't... I also hear that for the Republican. Well, and and and, and vote for him. Who you think's going to do the best job? Uh, well, who, I mean. Uh, Right now, why does people hate uh, Obama so much? Because I can't see where Obama has been such a bad president. I don't think I know where he'll he's been playing too much golf. <laughs> Listen, that's 
a 24 hour, seven day a week job, but yeah, uh, you have to have some uh, rest and relaxation. Oh yeah, no matter what. Yeah. You, no matter who you are, what you are, no matter, you get tired. You gotta go somewhere and let the brain rest. Yeah. And well, what Campbell Kennedy needs to do, they need to find somebody that will fight for Campbell Kennedy, like uh, uh, the mayor. <laughs> Lord mercy. William, he wasn't worth a dime. <laughs> when we got in there, he ain't worth a dime. He, I mean, they ain't done nothing for the people. I hear them say that they ain't to, but they ain't done nothing that they ain't say. Did I read you the article uh, uh, last week about what Scott County, uh, one of the commissioners, well, actually, it was two commissioners talking. And they actually, and this was record. It's on uh, tape. We run it on TV. This one commissioner said, "You know, we got to start focusing and 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 get rid of some of these little old things that we argue about and stuff, and start doing something." But one of the commissioners came back and said, "Yeah, yeah, we need we need to quit bickering," uh, and said, "We've been here now for a, a year and a half, and you know what?" We haven't accomplished not one thing. In fact, about it, we've gone backwards. Well, that's like Kim and Kim. <laughs> Everything they get get going, they'll be one or two going against it. The next week they'll be for it. One that was for it would be against it. I mean, they they just don't make no sense to me. I mean, it's and you can't keep changing and changing and changing. You got to look around and say, well, okay, who who done this? And, and I'm going to tell you, I talked to uh, one, and, and how many commissioners was, that went back this time over here? You have 15, uh, didn't uh, four of them go back, or and then uh, they had some that was went back. had been there before it went back, and, and I had one, uh, I had a commissioner tell me, I've served on uh, commission here uh, for quite a while. And he said, this is the worst commission we've ever had. You know, there was a young man on there that uh, had the commission. He got it for commissioner down there. Then they said he didn't uh, get his name in on time or something like that there. He wasn't in my area. But I'm telling you what, people may not know it. You're in Campbell County, but that young man, he saved a lot of people's back. Here Tommy Hatmaker. Yes, sir. He and, sure did. and folks, if it hadn't been for Tommy Hatmaker, and and I'm not taking any. Uh, that house in me would shine. But you know, we sit here and talk about that. That that lighthouse would have been already built. Yeah. But. Uh, and not benefited nobody, but who would have been paying for it? The camera County. Well, he would have benefited. Yeah, he would have benefited, but it might have been just uh, eight or ten people. Well, just the big boys had it tied up with their pocketbook. That's all, but I'm telling you. I don't know. Uh, anyway, but now, if it was such a great thing, I'm sure that there's people in this town and in the whole bit, if it was going to be such a great thing, that they were willing to let the county pay eighteen million dollars for. Well, there's plenty of investors out there that eighteen minute million dollars is is a drop in the bucket. Drop in the bucket. And and they would have already done that thing. Now you look at Roy, uh, 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 Lake City. Lake City. Now these people has come and made a, a pledge. You get your name changed to Rocky Top. We will. We're going to invest millions and millions of dollars into Rocky Top. Yeah. Well, drive up to 141. Hey, I go by there quite old. <laughs> <laughs> going to do you something They should have named it. Maybe they got stuff for going. They. They got a sign up for them. They need help. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and people say, well, I'll it's tell you what, crazy, well, you've got that factory up there. They can't get enough workers. Yeah. And, and then they're saying, oh, we're so depressed around here. i tell you what we got. we got so many uh, drug addicts that if you've got to take a, a drug test, they can't pass it. 
Oh, well, let me tell you what, I put it on your show a long, long time ago. I needed 19 painters to go to, their expenses would be paid going to, uh, down there at Duke Power, where my brother was over, he's needing painters. Uh-huh. Oh, you're talking about over in North Carolina? Yeah. He was over Duke Power down there, my brother was, and he needed uh, painters to go. Or if, everybody called, but they wouldn't have uh, one from Campbell County. Other, now, they had some from Claiborne County, but they wouldn't have from Campbell County could pass the test. And all they would was a urine test. Well, uh, Taco Bell came to, and I might have told this story too, came to Scott County last year, it was, uh, well, a year, it was a year ago, it probably, yeah, it opened up early last year. And they uh, opened and, and it hadn't been advertised in about, about a week or so, and uh, they ended up, no, it's been two years ago, ended up anyway uh, hiring 40-something people. And I called the mayor, and I said, uh, "Mayor, how how in the world could Taco Bell get that many workers in a week or a week and a half?" He said, "They don't drug test." Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the way they do it. But oh, well, I was saying this: there used to be a place right on the right hand side going towards. Uh, before you get to Norma, there we turn off of the Normandy school. Uh -huh. They used to feed the pigs uh, lunches in there. Can you tell me what the name of that little market was? Oh. What is it? I, wait a minute. I'm trying to. In market. I, I know where this little restaurant at. Yeah, you know. But now, it, where you turn into Norma, it's over on the. Uh, you're talking about if you're going east, it's on the left hand side. Right. Okay, that was Rector's. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, them big places is just about, I, re, I don't know if it's even open now or not. Other than just, uh, uh, I think they may sell gas or something. Where at? Oh, at that little, um, they, no, they don't sell anything. It's It's been closed now <laughs> for, uh, okay. it's been closed now for three or four years. Ray Gilton. Over, he told me, he said, you can go right there. He said, you get the best meal you ever eat. And said, all you want to eat for $2.15. But now this is back, it was back a while. Yeah. And we uh, we used to drive from here and go over there to eat a lot. Yeah. Well, now that, yeah, that's back quite a while ago. Uh, yeah, that was uh, Ernest Rector. He, he, no, Rector. He, yeah, he, he, he died about... Uh, I'd say eight or ten years ago, cause time passes by so fast now. It just I don't know. There's a Phillips guy over summer, and I cannot remember where he is. Was yeah, I'll tell you where it was at. Uh, do you know where the uh, Rainbow Restaurant was at, or mm -hmm. the Sunrise Restaurant? Uh, that next service station. Uh, when you go past it on the left there, that was Phillips's. Oh, okay. Yeah, now, now they had a little restaurant in there, one, uh, or served some food yep. in there at one time. Then out there on 27, out there at that drive-in, they used to have one. Yes. Yes. Bluebird. Huh? Bluebird. No, the Bluebird Grill was, when you turn off it, it was at Pioneer. Pioneer, yeah, okay. That's where I was trying to think what the name of that place was. Yeah, that was a that was a good place to eat too. Yeah, they made some of the best coconut and lemon pies you ever eat, and, and the best hot dog that's ever been made. <laughs> and hot dog, we get three, you get three hot dogs for a dollar. Uh huh. Okay. Well, listen, I gotta go. Appreciate hey, you, Kyle. Talk to you. I'm sorry to take up all your time. Oh, you ain't taking up my time. I love it. There's nobody to call. Okay. Thank you. Art. Okay. Bye bye. We'll be back after these words from our sponsors. Are you missing out on extra Medicare benefits that you may be entitled to? Hi, my name is Blake McCoy with Independent Insurance Consultants. If you have Medicare A and B and have Medicaid, 
Tim Care, QMB, or receive extra help on your prescription, drug premium, and co-pays. I want to make sure that you are receiving all the extra benefits that you are entitled to. Call me toll free today, 1-866-691-5571 and let me help you. Welcome to Raise Axe. Raise Axe has a friendly service with a family environment. With that country kick, it's a family owned with delicious food. Offering breakfast, lunch, supper all day long and great steaks, wonderful salmon. Also for that sweet tooth, pies and much more. For the kids, games, daily specials, dine in or carry out. Call 423-569-3354. Call Raise Axe today. Riggs Drugs has been a part of Campbell County for generation after generation, serving our friends and neighbors. And now we have redesigned our store to better serve you. It's the same knowledgeable and friendly staff, but a new look and new technology to ensure you get your prescriptions fast. We've always got you covered from prescriptions to all your home health needs. We've always been more than a pharmacy, still offering a huge selection of gifts and decor here at the new and improved Riggs Drugs. Hi, I'm Ann Loeb with Linda Kilgore State Farm Agency. I have worked in the insurance and financial services industry for over 20 years, formerly with the John R. W. Brown Agency. I'm a native Campbell County and enjoy helping people with their insurance needs. Stop by and see me for all your insurance needs. With these four machines, we've covered all the bases. We've got a party barge, a mud beast, a couple of nasty ATVs for guys who just love to get dirty. Like the Razor High Lifter Edition, this machine is built for the mud. Basically, it's a water buffalo. It will take you through the mud and brush like you wouldn't believe. Why do my customers choose Husqvarna Power Equipment? And that's easy, because my landscaping crew has to rely on a durable product. I need the performance and quality that Husqvarna provides. And the innovative products that help me move on with my day. For maintenance parts or accessories, I don't have to go far. I know my Husqvarna dealer is right around the corner. Make the impossible possible and visit a Husqvarna dealer near you. Visit your local Husqvarna dealer or go to Husqvarna.com for more information. Okay, folks. True value homes in Ron's golf cart and indoor flea market and white knuckley then over in scott county in may is bringing you tonight's show hey um i got a, an interesting uh uh <laughs> column i thought from ann hester this week and uh reading it in the paper and i just thought man uh i got two things about this uh, that might uh uh, I don't know, make sense to some of you or not make sense to some of you. Uh, the thing is about having America, the land of stuff. I mean, everywhere you look, there's stuff. There's got, everybody's got two cars, everybody's more, kids have got more toys than they never think about, and people's got more clothes than they can possibly wear. Uh, and it's stuff, stuff, stuff. But if all of us quit having all that stuff, China and Japan and Mexico, they'd all be wanting to fight us. All of them would be wanting to fight us. Because Without us, their economy would go straight in the tube. But if would, could could we actually manufacture and keep uh, the the stuff made in America? Would we buy it? When we look around and we can get it somewhere, because that's why we. Uh, rush to Rome, Walmart's, but and and we all think that oh God, Walmart's giving us some good deal, but folks, they're not. 
How much do you pay for hamburger meat up here at uh, and some of the best that you could possibly find at this meat store? Is it uh, Wilton Walton's? I can't think of the name of it. Anyway, I've been up there a couple of times, and and, and folks, they do have some good looking meats up there. I looked at some meat today at down here at uh, the IGA. Far as I'm good looking, a lot of marble in your uh, New York strips. Seven dollars and seventy nine or ninety five cents a pound. I go to Walmart and look at the same thing. Ten dollars and ninety-five cents or ninety-nine cents. Eleven dollars and some of it. So we're talking about seven or um, anywhere from three to four dollars a pound more. I can get hamburger meat, and I'm talking about Angus. In Scott County, at Helmwood Foods, for two two dollars and ninety five cents or whatever, it's four dollars and something at Walmart. You you go and, and honest to you honest to God you don't, and and what's so bad about it? If you really look at the labels. Even the meat's not from the United States. A lot of the meat anymore is coming from Mexico or Brazil. You, you, you name it. And as long as we keep going and going and going. Now, I, uh, if I can get it somewhere else, I'm not going, I don't go to Walmart. Now, a lot of people say, "What well, you can? Why are you going and doing it?" Listen, I can go uh, and probably buy uh, uh, food anywhere I want to buy it because I, I, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to do that. But folks, I, I go to big lots a lot of times, and if I, ch I check out, uh, if I want to. Uh, uh, Del Monte uh, uh, fruit. I like to buy canned fruit. It's the same at at Walmart as it is, and I get it cheaper. Sometimes as much as thirty, forty cents a can cheaper, and I get the same thing. So you think that you're uh, saving money by going to Walmart, folks? If you'll just look around a little bit, but now. Stuff. I want to know how much stuff. And I only got about 15 minutes because I'm, I'm going to start going off about five minutes so that uh, Miss Honeybee can get out of here at uh, 10 o'clock just like I do instead of having to be here so late. And and I can get home just a little bit. Early. But how many people you know that actually if you look around Folks, I take away. Now, I am one of those that the plastic bags. I If I go get stuff at, no matter where I go get stuff at, and put it in a plastic bag, I have a, a, a can or just a, a plastic uh, trash can that I put those bags in and I put my trash in that and I tie them up and I take them to the dump myself because I'm always going by the dump or the uh, the center so I, I, do, I take care of that myself I have two cars but why would I want three? Some people, I mean, really, fellow, only, how do we live when we only have one? And, and they, they, one of the things that bothers me the most, 
I get one of the most anyway is where there's junk cars. Uh, they can be three or four or five of them sometimes in the yard that don't have any uh, or they, all the tires are flat or trees growing up through the windows or whatever. Does that bother anybody besides me? Or is it in my business? I mean, I don't understand that we say there's no work or there's no... Folks, there's there's more work. You can't... People can't get just like this man called here tonight. Okay, Duke uh, Electric and you know, it's between uh, uh, Knoxville, when you go into the smoke, it's on I-40, and when you get between, it's between Knoxville and Asheville, is probably where they're wanting to go. I mean, I, it goes in a lot of area over there, probably goes all the way to the coast. But you know, if they wanted painters, and I'd say to do it with the uh, energy, they were probably paying a good $15 an hour. I don't know exactly what it's paying, but to put, we can't get workers, but we still have so much stuff. And if we didn't buy stuff, we wouldn't be working. So, <laughs> when uh, I was talking to a person yesterday, and we was talking, well, in fact, I was talking to a person today about it. How did people live back when they, were, especially in this area, when they had so many kids, had six or eight, ten, twelve, some of them even more? I know there's a, there was a, a, a man over at home, I know that had 26 kids, but you know, there was, and I know a man that's living today and wanted hard me to go to work at Levi Strauss. Uh, he had uh, six or eight by his first wife and she died with cancer at a, uh, a young age. She was probably in her early 50s and he married a, a younger woman and I don't know how many he's got, but they've all, all been good people. But uh, how, did we, how did we live when we didn't have a closet in our house or we didn't have a, a dresser? Uh, we didn't have heat except in one room and we went to bed at night. With it's so much cover that you couldn't turn over. But now we complain all the time because we don't have anything. So many people complain all the time. I don't have anything. Folks, it's if we get off our cans and get off the drugs, we might be able to have more. You're on the air. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. I'm happy to. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing well. Now, I've been talking bad about you tonight. <laughs> I just called the end of it. I've not been home too long. Uh, I fell there so he couldn't get nobody to work. Yeah. Do you think that, that that's this is the only county or his county? I'm not sure if it was in this county or not. Uh, do you think that this is the only county that that's happening in? No. Okay. I, I'm setting you up. <laughs> the other night in the, in the Republican debate, Rubio was criticizing Trump for hiring summer helpers from overseas. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, Exact same thing goes on in Sevierville when they have the season over there, Dollywood, all the restaurants, they'll have these um, 
people from out, out of the country, yeah. Yeah, they'll have they, they, come in and work. They can't get I mean, enough help. Because they can't get the help. Uh, you know, they they want the whole Republican Party wants to make a big deal out of this because Trump was hiring hiring these people to come in and work. Right. And I completely understand it. You can't get nobody to work. Uh, to follow up on that, you know, one of the biggest things that the county faces in trying to get industry in here. The first thing they're going to look at when they look to, you know, locate a business here is they're going to look at your crime rate. Absolutely. They're going to look at your crime rate. They're going to look at your absentee rates. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to follow that by looking at your high, high school graduation rate. Right. And, and if, if those are off kilter, then they're going to go find a different place. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, that's one of the reasons that the county doesn't have the industry. Uh, it's, it's not a Yale's fault. It's not the uh, industrial board's fault. It's nope. not the commission's fault. It's it's just been going this way for a long time. We've and I, and I don't know that throwing more money at the school system is going to help the kids learn better. Uh, I think you got to get rid of this common core crap. Yeah, I think it. I think that's about gone. It, it, no matter who gets elected, common core is in problem. It, it is in trouble. Policy. Yeah. The fail policy is all it is. No question about it. Now, just like you got up here at the interstate, uh, a good good friend of mine is the uh, human resource manager up there. Uh, you might know him, Greg King. Or some of you people here know, have to know him. He's a, he, he, I, 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 I doubt seriously first. If I guess Glenn Hudson, if he was back here in the county, he could might beat, uh, or he would beat uh, Greg King, I guess. But Greg King, if he prayed much, he couldn't beat Greg, I don't think, that much. But my, here's my, what I'm trying to say. They're up there, and they're trying to get people in And see, they can draw right straight from Scott County. They can draw from here, and they're up on 141. And they can't keep enough workers. They tried to expand to a second shift, and they needed several, several workers. They can't get them and keep them. I know. I, I got the same problem. I've probably got the best crew guys that I've had in, in several years working for me now. But, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. They, they've been times that I'd have to hire six to keep three on a job. <laughs> or... Had to pay them on Monday so they'd have cash all week instead of being pay them on Friday or broke on Monday. So I tried paying on Monday for a while. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It, it, and then we and we try to blame everybody but ourselves. But like I, I, that's the reason why I was going into Ann Hester's thing here. But we got so much we don't know what to do. And then if, if and if, and we'll get out. And how does these people that's on these drugs? And I'm gonna tell you today. Today, I was in the IGA here in La Follette. A young lady, she ran me down to where she knows that, that the people there at the IGA or management couldn't see her. And uh, she said, could you give me some money I need to feed my kids? She had uh, several tattoos on her body. Yeah, she could afford them, and she couldn't afford to feed the kids. So I said no. But it, it after she left, and she must have left and went out because I went looking for her because I was going to give her some money because I just felt a little giddy. What if it's what if it's true? What if she really does need money to feed her kids? He should have offered to just meet her down here at Burger King or somewhere. And that's uh, I, uh, I was going to ask her, you know. What do you need for your kids? And and let's go in here and buy some stuff, and I'll pay for it. But I wasn't going to give her money. She'll turn around and she'll go back in and take it back. You know. The, the, but she was already uh, gone. I couldn't find her. I'm I'm one of the uh, charter members of the LA Cruisers Car Club here in town, and we spend 150 dollars a piece on. I think we did 48 kids last year, or maybe just a little bit more than that. And we do that at Christmas. And, you know, it was a learning curve for us when we first started doing this. The first couple of years, we finally had someone from Walmart tell us that 
we were going to have to do something because they were having all this merchandise brought back and turned in for money. Right. Ken Jeff had to cut all the labels out of them and take the barcodes off of them so they couldn't return the, the parents couldn't return the toys and stuff and clothes that we were buying for the kids. Well, I know what you're talking about because we was doing the same thing from uh, the, the TV station. We was giving 50, 75 turkeys away every Christmas or Thanksgiving. And, and other people was chipping in some of the stores and stuff and letting us buy them at, at lower cost and what have you. And come to find out there was a family that was had four or five different members of the family and they were all coming through and getting a turkey and then they was going to sell them. Yep. That's just terrible. Well, I listen, I got another call here, buddy. I appreciate your call, but uh, you were right. Uh, it, it, right now, you, you can't keep workers. So, it, and I, I don't know, I, I don't know that it starts with Trump, but uh, at least he's not a career politician. <laughs> well, let me, I got to tell you this, though, uh, I, mean, I, I laughed. Did you watch the debate last night with uh, uh, Hillary and uh, Sanders? I didn't. Okay, oh, they, I uh, but, <laughs> they, they were talking back and forth what we need, what we need, what we need. And, and Sanders said, and, and we need to attack this mental problem we got. He said, because if you was watching the Republican debate the other night, you would understand. <laughs> Tickle the heck up. I guess she was hard burn baby burn and he was hard being gone. <laughs> oh God, I appreciate your call, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Okay, the person's been trying to call me for <laughs> several times. Please call me back because I got about five minutes I can talk to you. Give me a call. <laughs> but uh, it did. It, I mean, it just tickled me. Uh, uh, he hit the hit a funny bone or something. Other than I could, I still laughing about it. And it <laughs> he said, "Yeah, if you watch that Republican, I've never. I mean." It went crazy, and I don't think that uh, Rubio, it, it helped him a bit for attacking Trump the way he's attacked him, because I believe it's actually hurt him more. And and the money that's been put, and every governor, and everybody is back in Rubio, but he's went south. You're on the air. Hey, uh, you know you're talking about uh, people can't get a job around here. I got out of the Marine Corps in uh, 65 and I had to leave here to get a job. And I found out that anywhere you go, you see hillbillies from uh, Tennessee and, and around close here that, that's working uh, everywhere, but they can't get a job here. So it's not the people are lazy and stupid, it's just there are no jobs here. Well, I don't. I, there, there's jobs here. It's just not the jobs that they want. Hey, listen. Just go up here on top of the mountain. Uh, they're hiring right now. You go uh, around any down. Go down to Clinton. There, there uh, down there in their industrial park. There's jobs everywhere. And no, Scott, people working on them, but there's not jobs for everybody. A lot of people can't find a job. I, you know. Well, now. I know where there's jobs where you can go if you don't uh, 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 if you can pass the, the their uh, on their application and take uh, the drug test and you pass it you can go to work. Takahata over in Scott County is needing about 20 people. Well, that that that'd be good, but uh, you you're making it look bad on the people that lives around here. And well, I'm not I'm not I'm a some of the best workers in the world is from right around here. That's exactly right, and you'll find them all over the world, and, and they can't find a job here, so you can't. I don't know why they can't. Right now, there's a lot of jobs out there, but again, now, whenever I, in 1960, I graduated from high school, uh, I had to go, I went to Cincinnati, and I went to work. I went to, uh, had to leave that one and because I, I wasn't happy with the, the work that I was doing. I couldn't get the kind of job I wanted. So I went to Indiana and I went to work. 
Then I went into the Army, went back to Indiana, ended up working at the uh, Western House, had a great job, but my wife hated Indiana, so did I. Coldest place on the face of the earth when the wind is blowing in the winter time and it gets down to 10 or 12 degrees above zero and that wind blowing and it's about 40 degrees below zero. She hated it, I hated it. But she came home and then I, I followed her and went to Levi Strauss and ended up the best thing that ever happened to me. I yeah, well, I, I know what you mean, but uh, as you know, some people can't find a job. I've been all over the world and, and I've never been homesick, but I always wind up right back here in Gamble County. <laughs> Let me tell you something, other. I've been homesick and it's the worst sickness in the world. Appreciate your call. Okay, do. Thank you. Good night. Okay, folks. Again, I couldn't do this stuff and couldn't be here if it wasn't for like True Value Homes and Ron's Golf Cart and Indoor Flea Market and White Knuckle Event and all these people that advertise this with me, they help me. Just like tonight, I had to pay my bill. My bill was four hundred dollars. I have to, I have to get out there and hustle. If I can get that, so I can pay that. And without them, I just hope you'll get out there and and. Uh, patronize our sponsors and good night everybody I'll see you next week